UN nuclear watchdog is discussing Iran after delivering its harshest report yet, claiming Tehran could be developing an atomic bomb. It includes evidence from a foreign expert that some Western media wrongly claim to be Russians, saying he's helping Iran build a detonator. As RT Zanisa Nawe reports, with anti-Iran sentiment at a high, the IAEA's findings could see it following the Iraq game plan. Iran has long been a hot topic. Bomb Iran, you know, <laughs> bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the gravest threat that America and the world faces, uh, had faced was a nuclear Iran. But it's heated up since last week's report from the U.N.'s nuclear watchdog, sparking fears Iran was pursuing atomic weapons. The IAEA says Iran developed a high explosive initiation system, a detonator, with the help of a foreign expert. That foreign expert is called the mystery scientist and Russian by some Western media, even though the IAEA report doesn't name him. And he's not Russian, but Ukrainian. Here's how former weapons inspector David Albright talks up the scientist's nuclear credentials on CNN. He showed them how to build a a thin hemispherical shell with holes in it and where the detonation happens and you simultaneously set off explosive pellets in a series of holes in that aluminum shell and those explosive pellets ignite the high explosive underneath and in a very spherical way it compresses the core and then you get a nuclear explosion. Vyacheslav Danilyantka is a scientist but not a nuclear specialist. Those who actually know Danilyantka say this. He worked in a nuclear facility, but not every person who does is a nuclear specialist. He's actually trained to construct airplanes, and it's not the IAEA that is questioning him now, but journalists. Nevertheless, Albright accuses Danilyanka, who specialized in nano diamonds in Iran, of working with the Iranians to help them miniaturize their nuclear warhead so they can put it on top of one of their missiles so it can be fired. Albright has a history of pointing fingers. Just before Iraq was invaded, he said this in 2002. In terms of the chemical and biological weapons, Iraq has those now. How many? How could they deliver them? I mean, these are big questions. Then backtrack to the LA Times once no WMDs were discovered in Iraq. If there are no weapons of mass destruction, I'll be mad as hell. I certainly accepted the administration's claims on chemical and biological weapons. I figured they were telling the truth. And some U.S. politicians think non-truths could be repeating with Iran. I'm afraid what's going on right now is similar to the war propaganda that went on against Iraq. You know, they didn't have new, uh, weapons of mass destruction. But there were enough official reports implying otherwise. Uh, in terms of the report, there is limited information. Uh, a lot of the reason it's limited is because it's most likely that Iran does not, uh, well, it is, you know, it, it is the case, Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program outright. Diplomatic deja vu, it could be called. Critics say the public, especially in the U.S., are about to be inundated with another flood of so-called expert analysis. Beware of a dangerous Mideast country that's presumably hiding secret nuclear weapons and may require a military strike. The difference, this time, it's Iran, not Iraq. And you send away RT, 